Today I am going to be singing songs of the Sephardi Jews of northern Morocco. They're in, mostly in a language called Haketia, which is Moroccan Judeo-Spanish. The word Haketia actually comes from the Arabic. It comes from the word Haqqa, which means to tell. And, uh, and so these are songs that are sung traditionally by the Jews that came to northern Morocco after the expulsion in 1492 and that settled in various cities in northern Morocco in order to keep their language and culture which was a little bit different from the Judeo-Arabic speaking Jews and the Judeo-Amazir, the Berber Jews that were already living in Morocco before the expulsion. So this repertoire actually is very interesting because it's also multilingual. It has mostly Haketia, right, Moroccan Judeo-Spanish, which is this mixture of medieval Spanish with Hebrew and with Moroccan colloquial Arabic, Darija, mixed in uh, according to you know, the time period and, and the topic of the song and all that. And, and, but we also have some songs, some of the, the paraliturgical songs have lines in fully in Hebrew and fully in Arabic as well that so I'll be singing that later and uh, and one of the interesting things is that it's actually a repertoire that that has been often thought and studied as a reminiscent to this nostalgia of living in Spain but actually what I have found is that the repertoire is used by the local Jews in Morocco for very local and contemporary reasons that they are passing messages on to the younger generations. So it's actually a form of mediated communication which happens through song because very often they, the songs are about topics that we don't want to discuss freely or that we feel uncomfortable discussing freely in conversation. So we sing about it. And in singing the song and telling the story to the younger generation, then we pass the message that they need to hear. And so sometimes you'll hear, for example, in the first song that I'm going to sing, Al Pasar por Casablanca, it's actually a song that comes from uh, a 13th century Austrian lead called Kundrus Lied. And it's known all throughout the Mediterranean basin. It's a song about a kidnapping of a young woman it, she was kidnapped during the Reconquista Wars, right? The wars between the, the Christians and the Muslims in Spain. And, but it's interesting because why is a Jewish woman singing this song about kidnapping in the Reconquista time of a Christian woman by the Muslims? Because it's mediated communication. And they've changed the text and the title to Al Pasar por Casablanca, going through Casablanca, because in post-independence Morocco in 1960s, there was a whole spate of kidnapping of young Jewish women. So there's a, a story about telling the young Jewish women, beware to not venture too far away, to not be alone on the street, beware because there is a, a latent danger, but they weren't gonna say it directly. So the story goes, there's a young woman who is washing her um, clothes in the river and a young knight comes on his horse and tells her oh you're so beautiful my young beautiful moorish girl and she says i'm actually not a, a muslim i'm a captive christian and i was captured on the days of uh, pascua florida of flowering easter and then uh he says well why don't you come with me and she says well what about my honor he says, I will guard your honor with, the t with my sword. And so she goes on his horse and starts to sigh and to cry because she recognizes the olive fields that they're going through. And he asks her, why are you crying? And she says, I recognize these olive fields where my father would come hunting with my brother Alejandro. And he says, you are my long lost sister that was kidnapped. So he arrives to the castle door, bangs on the doors, and says, open the windows. I thought I was bringing a wife, but I'm actually bringing my sister. And the parents are sighing and crying and asking her, where have you been all these years? And she says, I was a slave in a cave, washing 
handkerchiefs in crystal clear water. So we have the message of the kidnapping and we have the message of the averted incest because she was so wary about her honor. And at the end we have her veiled message encoding saying that she was pure, that she was washing in crystal clear waters, which means that her honor was still crystal clear, which is uh, fundamental for the Jewish women in this society. Al pasar por Casablanca.
The next song I'm going to do is called Mose Salio de Misraim. And it's a song about Moses and the vision at the burning bush and hearing the voice of God and then going to demand to Pharaoh to release the Jewish people from slavery. And at the very end, it has two lines that come from the Psalms, from the Hallel, which is a, a prayer sung on, on holidays. Hodu ladonai kitov kile olam chastu in Hebrew, and then translated into Judeo-Spanish. Blessed be God, because God is good, because he gives us always his grace. I'm not sure if that's the English translation that is used in, in the English-speaking liturgy, but um, it's, it's a text that we all know very well. And so this, this is a song that was actually sung very often in the weeks leading up to Passover, and which was sung while they were preparing the house for the Passover, which means that you have to clean leaven out of every single corner. And leaven is the symbol of the ego. So the idea is to clean out the ego and to flatten and to go back to, to the essence. And then during the baking of the matzot, of the unleavened bread, the women very often would go, they would kosher the communal oven in, in the old quarter of the city and they would close it up all night long and sing and, and bake the, the matzah, which has to be baked in under 18 minutes so that the leaven doesn't start to rise. And this would be one of the songs that they would sing together with psalms and with the halel, with the, this, uh, this prayer service, which the men would also sing or, or certain psalms from it. So I find it as a... I actually, for me, it's, a, it's an interesting idea of this uh, sonic impregnation into the food and into the holiday and creating the aura of the holiday even before through the sound and through the story of the sound. So, Mose salió del Misraim. Oh, 
to sing a song now that's in three languages and which actually shows the history of the multiple integrations and disintegrations of the Jewish community in Morocco because of all the migrations. So it's actually a song from the liturgy, from the very end of the Shabbat liturgy, which is called En Kelohenu, which means there is none like our God. But it's actually sung in Hebrew, in Judeo-Arabic, and in Judeo-Spanish. And it was sung to me by somebody who came from Fez, which was historically the, the most contentious city between the different uh, Judeo-Arabic and Judeo-Spanish communities because there was a very important established community in Fez. We know that Maimonides went there fleeing um, from the Almohad that forced conversions early on. And, and even in, I mean, this one was sung to me in December of 2008 by a a fussy Jew living in Boston, um, but he remembered it being sung in his synagogue to remind the, 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 the fussy Jews, the Jews from Fez, about this history because there were some families that came from Spain and there were some families that were Toshavim that had, that had lived in Morocco for millennia. And so to give everybody their due respect than people saying this prayer, which is not in the, in the more formal part of the, of the liturgy in a, in a trilingual version. Often it's actually sung in these three versions only on holidays, and in some synagogues it's sung every Shabbat in three languages. So they say, there is none like you, there, and then there is, who is like our God? We will praise our God, and blessed is our God.
I'm now going to sing another romance, a uh, romance from the romancero, the Judeo-Spanish romancero, which is, uh, many of the texts are actually, are found in songbooks from the 15th and 16th century in Spain. But um, often, sometimes, we find the songs only in the oral tradition. So this song is actually a song that is found in the oral tradition of Tetuan in northern Morocco, of Oran in Algeria, and of Cuba, but not in the peninsula. And it's an interesting song because it's a song that talks about a warrior maiden. So I like it because it talks, it's, a, it's like a feminist song from the Judeo-Spanish Romancero talking about uh, this young woman. It actually, it's very interesting because it has a lot of uh, medieval poetic imagery. And it talks about a young woman who's the daughter of the king and she, uh, he's built her a beautiful tower by the ocean with a small window and a sparrow hawk comes in and out of the window doing her no harm. The sparrow hawk is an erotic symbol from medieval poetry and she is in her, um, in her tower embroidering with pearls and with jewels and sighing and they ask her, why don't you sing, O beautiful maiden? She says, I don't sing and I won't sing because my beloved is at war. And uh, he, I, I will actually write a letter demanding that he be brought back to me safe and sound and not in chains. And if he's not brought back, then I myself will go to war with soldiers in land and with with the navy in the sea and if there are no oars I will put my arms as oars and if there are no sails I will put my braids as sails and if there's no captain I myself will be a captain so that people may say long live this beautiful maiden that threw herself into the storm for her beloved so una hija tiene el rey
mano y vivo y sin cadenas. Si no me lo trajeré, yo armaré una grande guerra de navíos por la mar y de gente armada por tierra. to sing a song now called Hitora la Nunitana. And this one is actually a song that is uh, uh, in what we call macaronic haketia. It's an extremely heavy haketia, full of words in Hebrew and of unintelligible words as well. Um, it's a song that is sung in the synagogue during two different holidays that are celebrating the Torah. On Simchat Torah, which is at the end of the high holiday season, uh, in usually in around September, October, and on Shavuot, which is actually coming up in the Jewish calendar, um, actually next week from the week that we're recording this, so in, in a couple of days. And it's, it's a holiday that celebrates, the Simhat uh, Shavuot is actually the holiday that celebrates the giving of the Torah on Mount Sinai. So this has a lot of images of, um, of the vision of seeing, um, seeing the voices and, and hearing the visions on, on Mount Sinai during the giving of the Torah and of uh, the singing and the joy that has to come after being uh, given this precious gift of the Torah. And uh, it also talks about the Messiah, the coming of the Messiah. So at the end it says, Venga el Mashiach eh, Oshiana. So because the Jewish people are still waiting, for the, for the Mashiach, for the end of days. So, so the, it's, it's a very interesting song that, that combines these visionary and messianic um, ideals and that, are, that is sung in the synagogue when the ark is open and when the Torah scrolls are exposed. It's sung in Judeo-Spanish. <laughs> 